Starting a farmer's market in your community can be a challenging task. There's lots of market research and planning that needs to be done. There are permits that need to be secured, vendors that need to be sought out, and lots of promotional campaigns that have to be done. I'm author Gwen Elise Clayton, and I love farmer's markets, craft fairs, street fairs, and all that good stuff. Today's episode is part two of a community's guide to farmer's markets. Now last week we spoke to representatives from the Greenup County Farmer's Market. They've been doing their market since 2004. It's well established and they have a well-oiled machine. Today we are talking to leaders from the AKY Makers Market on the Square. 2022 was the first year of their venture, so we talked to them to see what lessons they learned this season. The AKY Makers Market on the Square is held on the second and fourth Saturdays of each month from June through September, and even into October, they're still working things out, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a collaboration of Visit Ashland and the AKY Area Moms Group. The market is located on Broadway Square at the corner of Broadway and 16th Street in downtown Ashland, Kentucky. I spoke with leaders from both organizations to see how their inaugural season went. This is actually something that we would call um, an event that was produced by citizen creators. So um, we had two ladies, Carly Thomas and Haley Shelton, uh, come to us with this idea that they wanted to have um, a market on Saturdays, um, kind of like a farmer's market, but also craft, so a mix. Um, and that fits perfectly with the branding that we have going downtown, create with us, um, the idea of bringing in people who are handcrafting goods here in the area. So um, they teamed up with us. What we did in this process is we simply guided them through the city's event planning application um, that they require for any type of event downtown, especially if you are going to require closing any type of street. Um, and then of course with marketing. So, um, you know, we love the idea. It's happening downtown. It fits perfectly with our branding. So of course we wanted to help market it. Um, and then we also attend the event. So um, we might have a booth out there. Um, if not, we're definitely there in person taking pictures and just enjoying the event. So on most occasions, it is kind of more of a local draw. Um, so you have people who are coming from, you know, around the area here in Ashland, um, but then it is kind of, we are in a unique situation where we're a tri-state, so we do have people who come from Huntington and Ironton, um, you know, which is nice. And, you know, on occasion when we do have events where people are staying downtown for something, let's say like Foxfire, if the Paramount has a big artist or a multi-day event, um, or another instance is the Naval Ship. When they were here, they were docked at the port for four days. So um, Pogue Landing Days was happening during that time. That's a huge craft fair um, that happens downtown every year. And they were so excited to be able to have something walking distance from the port that they could attend. Um, that's the same thing for people who are, you know, probably doing something with the Paramount. More than likely they're staying at the Delta um, or they're, you know, coming down early in the day to make a full day of their trip here. Um, and we are working towards um, we've actually been contacted by a couple different uh, boat companies who could potentially want to bring their tours here and dock at the port. So that would be something really nice for their guests to be able to get off the boat and check out if they happen to stay the night. And it's just a market that allows um, all types of vendors. It's not necessarily just a farmer's market. It's a market that has any type of handmade craft or produce that you can set up there. I am originally from Ashland, Kentucky. However, my family and I moved to Lexington a few years ago and we lived there for a while. Um, while we were there, one of the big things that became a tradition to our family was they have a massive market. Um, their biggest one is on Saturdays, but they almost have one about every day of the week. And we would go every Saturday. We really enjoyed it. Um, they had 
pretty much all produce because it's so much bigger there. They had so many more um, vendors there that did produce and farmers, but they also did vendors that had handmade things, and I loved it. It was very wonderful. We went there and got a lot of our produce. Um, hardly ever got it at the store, and it just became a tradition. It was super fun to get up early in the morning and walk around and just enjoy your day by doing that. My friend and I, uh, her name's Carly Thomas. She is the creator of the AKY Moms Area Group. Um, she's the one that started that group, and we had our first mom conference. Uh, we we're friends, so I helped her along with that journey as well. Um, so whenever I came up with this idea, I contacted her because since she organized that event for the mom conference. She created relationships with some uh, officials of the city um, and some authority type people. And so I was like, hey, Carly, I have this crazy idea. What do you think? And so she's kind of my first person to go to because she knew um, more people through the city and who to contact. What lessons did you learn this year? Organization is very big. Um, you have to be very organized to keep things like this on track and not get messed up with anything. Creating relationships with people is a lot. Um, like I said, um, getting to know city officials, um, people that's on like the city committee. Um, you know, you get to know people that um, like Brandy Clark, she's the executive director for the visit, um, AKY, the Ashland Visitor Center, as well as Courtney Hensley there. Um, she's the assistant director. They help us a lot with this. Um, so we kind of go hand in hand. We're constantly organizing these together, each and every market. Um, Josh Blanton, the city commissioner, he helps us with a lot of things. Donations, that is the biggest thing. Uh, we would not be able to make this happen without donations. Um, we did a lot of advertisement for our donations and it was we were so blessed to have so many people donate for us. Um, we do different levels and our sponsors that do donate to um, our group, um, we recognize them and however they donate. Um, Probably the main lesson I learned though is just the average Ashland person or just any person in general can make such a huge impact. You don't have to be a city official or someone well known to create something fun and positive for the community. All of our vendors that make this happen are just amazing people. We have an application process that we created online and we do look at those almost daily because we're constantly getting new people or other other people that we're, we haven't heard of yet. We select everyone. We've never really denied anybody. We want to allow everyone to come. We've not really said, no, you can't set up. The only reason you would ever be denied, the only times I've told people no, uh, we want it to stay a, it has to be handmade or a craft or um, produce or something of that nature. It can't be just like an everyday small business or, you know, like, um, like a reseller, like a reseller or like people that sell Mary Kay or stuff like that. We're not really allowing that. It just really has to be like a craft, something that comes from your hands. We want it to stay local and show all the hard work that these vendors do. So no MLMs. Right. However, we are going to um, be doing a Christmas market, and this is the only time that we are going to allow things like that, just because it is a Christmas market, so we want to allow more of a variety to shop around. We're having our mystery market, which is for Halloween on October 29th. Um, it is a night market. It's our first night market from six to nine. We talked about trying to do it through the winter, but really we just aren't big enough yet. Um, we don't have as many vendors that could produce um, like produce and things like that all through the winter. So I think we're going to cut it off there after Christmas and then start back up probably in the summer next year. We do ask every vendor does have to have by the city of Ashland um, that you do have to have either a temporary vendor's license or a business license. And you can obtain either of these through the city of Ashland's um, utility building, everyone knows it. Um, it's the downtown building where everyone pays their utilities. Uh, you can go inside the building and do it right there and fill it out right there and give it to them and pay for it. Um, the business license is obviously more expensive. It's like $100, I think, for the whole year. Um, a temporary vendor license is, I think, maybe like $10 the, a day, uh, whatever day you choose to set up. Um, if you are someone that does do food and brings food, um, you do have to contact the Boyd County Health Department. You are required. Um, they have someone there that deals with all this stuff. We give them their number, and they have to call and obtain that license and their approval through the Boyd County Health Department. I just can't thank the vendors enough. They put so much hard work into everything that we do, and it would not happen without our vendors. I mean, we just would not have a market. So it is so extremely important to recognize them. 
Um, we just want to thank everybody that shows up and continue to show up. It's super fun for me. It doesn't even feel like a job at all. I'm so excited every Saturday that we have it. I'm up early and I'm meeting the vendors there at like 7 a.m., um, getting coffee for everybody. And it's just a great a great thing to have. And um, it not only helps the vendors, but it just helps the community. It's a positive thing. They're, they're making money on their efforts. Um, it's also helping the local businesses that are around our market get business. Sometimes we sit back there on our market and we're like, wow, how long has it been since we've seen 20, 30 people walking down the streets of Ashland in a random Saturday morning? You just don't see it, but now we do. And it's like help the businesses a lot. You can see them coming in and out of different businesses as well. So I think it's both are a great thing. Some vendors set up at both the AKY Makers Market and the Greenup County Farmers Market. I spoke with Whitney and Stephen Howard of Howard's Garden Patch to see how they managed to do things. Oh, you're both here today at the Greenup County Farmers Market, but when the AKY Makers Market was going on, we were splitting both. So it started. It starts in the evening time. Uh, we have to. The pick. night before. Yeah, the night before we have to pick and get everything ready. Um, and then once we get our trucks loaded up in the mornings, I drive in here and uh, meet Whitney in here, help her set her tent and tables and stuff up. Um, and then her father comes and helps herself for that day. Um, and then I get up and go up to Ashland and uh, pack up and set up. And it and helps because the um, AKY market wasn't didn't start until nine yeah, an hour later an hour later and we started eight here so it kind of gave him a little bit of leeway to where we could he could set me fully up before he had to go set up himself yeah. now how did it work throughout the day with you being here by yourself or you being over there by yourself you know you get busy at times and uh but we got great customers and stuff and they um they're very patient they're very with patient. us and uh, we appreciate that a lot and uh, we just kind of take our time with it and do the best we can. Have fun. And have fun, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, how do you think about Saturday mornings as a good time to get people to shop? It's great, yeah. Um, especially when it's warmer out, you know. Yeah. It's a little cold right now, so people like to stay in in the mornings and stuff. But uh, it's definitely really nice in the summertime because it's just beautiful down here, yeah. honestly. Under the trees. Yeah. And you're in a good location in Ashland also. Yeah. It's a beautiful spot. You have the fountain and everything. It's pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty. As I mentioned in last week's episode, there are a lot of farmers markets out in my area of the country. There are markets in Ironton, Ohio, Grayson, Kentucky, Huntington, West Virginia, and many other places. All of them taking place on Saturday mornings. Although the Ironton Farmer's Market is also open on Fridays. The Boyd County Cooperative Extension Office has their Farmer's Market on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. The Portsmouth, Ohio Farmer's Market takes place on Tuesdays. There's the Wild Ramp in Huntington, which is a brick and mortar store that is open seven days a week all year round. My husband Eddie and I shop there a lot because we're too lazy to get our bones out the door on Saturday mornings in time for the farmer's market. As part of my research for this video, I hopped onto the Google Maps page for our local Kroger grocery store. I wanted to see what days and times were their busiest. Now, the problem I have with this graph is that it doesn't show the numbers on the y-axis, so I can't compare Saturday afternoons at 6 p.m. to Tuesday afternoons at 6 p.m. But suffice to say, seven days a week, their busiest hours are 4 to 7 p.m. Eddie and I usually do our shopping on Sunday afternoons because we want to have fresh food for the work week. Sometimes though we have really busy weekends and so we can't make it to the grocery store until Monday after work, especially if we need to use the pharmacy which has limited hours on the weekends. Drop me a comment below and tell me when you do your grocery shopping. Also. What do you think about farmers markets? Do you patronize them? If you found this video interesting or informative, please give it a thumbs up. 
and be sure to subscribe to the Rivervine YouTube channel to be part of our utopian community. I'm your host, Gwen Elise Clayton. I drop videos every Tuesday evening. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.